Panama's economy has boomed since the United States handed over control of the Panama Canal in 1999. Thanks to a combination of low taxes, immigration benefits and a favorable geographic location, in recent years the capital has welcomed an influx of expats. And with a massive public works program underway, it has also been playing host to many migrant workers. This growth illustrates the opportunities for cities across Latin America. But Panama's gridlock traffic and its poor areas also illustrate how the capital could start creaking under the weight of its own fast growth. Some are fearful of what rush development could mean for the city. One of those is Casey Hardin, a developer focused on long-term and socially responsible investment projects in Panama's old town. Panama is urbanizing very quickly, like everywhere in Latin America. You know, to have healthy cities is a key to having a healthy society in Latin America. Unfortunately, in, in most countries in Latin America, and certainly in Panama, the public policies tend to encourage economic segregation. They tend to push the rich into, into enclaves within the city, and they tend to push the poor further out into what eventually become the end of Ellis. Certainly the Old Town area, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, began to change amid Panama's general economic boom. And new market forces have been increasingly pushing people out of their houses. In the past decade, Panama has turned into a financial and trading hub for the region. Now, next to the Casco Viejo, or Old Town, the traffic clock streets, high-end commerce and the gleaming skyscrapers of central Panama City. But many fear a spillover effect onto this area could threaten the unusual and lively fact that both, rich and poor, can rub shoulders with each other. Indeed, this area of the city is considered both a jewel and a slum, where people of all social strata live and work. That is very rare in Latin America, a region marked by inequality, and where in some places like Panama, violence ranks among citizens' top concerns. A good example is located right next to the old town, the rough Chorrillo neighborhood, which is home to many of Panama's most violent gangs. Luzqueira Perez is a former gang leader. She started dealing drugs when she was only 10 and went to prison for the first time when she was 13. She has served two more sentences since. But now she's working hard to support her family and she's preparing herself to integrate fully into the city's life thanks to Fundación Calicanto, a women's group and one of this year's entrants for the Financial Times City Ingenuity Awards. He dedicado mi vida a muchas cosas malas, pero ya hace un tiempo he querido cambiar mi vida, reintegrarme a la sociedad y alcanzar nuevas metas y a demostrar que sí se puede, que se puede avanzar, que uno puede de verdad darle otro futuro a sus hijos. En estos barrios, en muchos lugares aquí nos discriminan, no tienen como que nadie cambia, como que no, todos son iguales y bueno, yo pensé, eh, no hombre, yo tengo que demostrar lo contrario de lo que piensan del barrio y entonces me he encontrado con esta, de verdad, este lugar donde nos han ayudado a las mujeres a encontrarnos con nosotras mismas, a conocernos, a crear metas, futuro, a crear qué es lo que queremos en la vida y cómo debemos de tratar a nuestra familia, cómo debemos ser en, en la sociedad, en el barrio. Women like Luzqueira are part of a broader community-wide effort to ensure that marginalized residents can take advantage of the opportunities that fast-growing Panama can offer. Everyday interactions between some of Panama's richest and poorest would help avoid segregation and, some believe, even crime. A truly mixed community working to maintain a culturally lively as well as a sustainable city. Harnessing the energy of the formerly excluded offers the hope of tackling fundamental issues in many of the cities that are growing rapidly across Latin America, where deep divisions and crime are acute problems. And if applied well, the lessons learned by organizations addressing such issues could bring benefits to urban populations across the globe.